Swedish Airlines Euroly. I feel devotion. In this episode, two series will need Game 5. Words from Athens, where we went to meet a rising star, Alejandro Abrines. Anadolu Efes back from 0-2 to tie with the champions. Real Madrid's Nikola Mirotic and Seska Moscow's Milos Teodosic back to the final four. And lastly, the two B-Win MVPs and the fantastic top five of each round. In Istanbul, Anadolu Efes had no more options in Game 3 against Olympiakos Piraeus after their two defeats in Greece in the previous week. The first good news for the Turkish side was that the three-point shooting was finally working as they finished with 8 for 15. However, Olympiakos was still far from dominated in the first half of the game. Jamon Lukos is maybe a little bit overlooked, but when the biggest games arrive, he is always ready to go, and he has proved it many times this season. The Anadolu Efes point guard did all that his coach Okte Mamuti could ask from him, with 13 points, 9 rebounds, 7 assists, 3 steals, and no turnovers. With a performance index rating of 24, he also earned our Game 3 B-Win MVP award, while his team won 83-72, going 1-2 against the Reds. Everything was different in Game 4. The reigning champion started strongly, but Lucas again and Semi Erden answered, following coach Mamuti's orders. First of all, he's, he has been the coach when FS went to Final Four the last time. I think that's a plus for us because he knows how to get a team to the Final Four. According to the coach, Everybody must be ready to do everything, not only making good plays, but also increasing the energy. You cannot win a big things with, uh, let's say, uh, 80%. You want to win something, you want to take something, you must spend all of your energy. So every game, every game should be the final. And always as a group. We win together, we lose together, so nobody do it uh, by itself alone. Soon the game became really tough. Kostas Papanikolaou scored one of his four triples. Lucas and Joshua Ship resisted scoring in the paint, while the game increased in its intensity. The moment of truth was coming. The Kyle Hines dunk and the reverse from AC Law allowed the Reds to lead by 8 points with 2 minutes 43 seconds left. Then came the moment of the two big stars of the Turkish team. I tried to just bring my experience in general, you know, I, I'm, my playmaking ability and, and leadership ability to this team, but also my experience. This is my seventh year as a pro. I played for great coaches and with great players and had a lot of success early in my career. Those are experiences that you can't teach, you just have to go through them and I'm trying to bring what I learned, you know, going through those battles to translate to this court over here. Anadolu Efes's defense stepped up and allowed Jordan to sign the open floor three-pointer to get closer. That play gave them a chance. Jamon Lucas made the miraculous tap-in to win Game 4, 74-73. We're going to play hard as we can to bring Final Four to Turkish. I know that's a big thing for the Turkish basketball fans at each club in Turkey, and it's a big thing for me because I've never been there. We can go to the Final Four. And sports itself, it's, uh, if you don't have an ambition, then don't play it at all. Everybody back to Piraeus. The show goes on. In the very same part of the bracket, Caja Laboral Vitoria had to win against Seska Moscow to stay in the series, knowing that the Russian side are in tremendous shape. The 
first part of Game 3 was very balanced, as both teams were showing their weapons competing play by play. It turned out to be a magic night for Cajalaboral's point guard Thomas Urtel, who missed almost nothing in the 21 minutes that he played. He led his team with a series of spectacular plays. His 21 points drove the Fernando Buesa Arena crazy and made coach Zan Tabak happy. We can make one or two adjustments in the game, but it wasn't something out of this world. It's not that we produced something extraordinary tactically. He definitely brought a different energy to the court. Caja Laboral won 93-72 to stay in the series and sent a strong message to the opponents. It was a sort of déjà vu for coach Ettore Messina, remembering the 2001 Euroleague finals with his Kinder Bologna. If a team with players like Ginobili has made the same mistake to think that a playoff away from home, in Victoria, against this team and these fans, has already been decided, imagine if we cannot repeat this with this team. We did it, and really paid for it, and now we must look forward. Obviously, I'm not pleased. If I had to take training now, what can I say? Do you remember the movie Frankenstein Jr., when they stick the knife in his leg? You have to stay calm, have dignity and class. You have to remain dignified and have some class, because the time for swearing is over. Frankenstein Jr. is a masterpiece, something that Seska did not do on Wednesday. Of course, if Seska does not work, it is also because their leader is having a bad night. <laughs> Who's the leader? Milos Teodosic, and not only because he's the point guard. It's just a question of style, the style in which he passes the ball. The style he shoots. <laughs> In other words, the style he moves on the floor, simply unique. Now in this moment, I really feel uh, perfect here. You know, I really love the club, I love the city, and, uh, you know, all my teammates are, 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 you know, great person and also great players. And also I have three Serbians in the team. And, you know, we're helping each other and, you know, I have a really, really nice, nice life here. One of his Serbian teammates is Nenad Kurstic, a perfect destination for his numerous assists. Of course, not only because he is from the same country. If you play with one player more years, of course you will understand better. And, you know, even last five years we are playing together in national team. And uh, I think that now in this moment we understand each other so good. Coach Messina added two more players to help Milos as point guards. Three in the same position, how can they do that? A question of skills different for each one. This is what one team needs. We cannot have three same point guards because I think this is not good for the team. And, you know, I think until now we, we work, you know, pretty good together. It was not an easy situation for Seska in game four. Milos was back to lead his team, scoring 13 points between triples and layups, also serving four assists. Until now, we are doing you know pretty good job, and uh, you know we will see. I think that that uh, that really we can make this season what we did in the last. He also scored probably the decisive and courageous triple that decided the result. If Milos played his part, two big men decided the game, both scoring 19 points. Sasha Kaun and above all Victor Kriapa, who also added 12 rebounds, 4 assists and 3 steals. The 6 for 10 from the field and the 4 for 6 from the line assured him a performance index rating of 29, enough to earn the B-Win MVP for the playoffs game 4.
The combination of Milos, Sasha and mainly Victor assured the win for Seska 94-85 and of course the flight to London. Now let's take a look to the top 5 plays of Game 3. Number 5. Vitoria Spain Thomas Huertel adds the finishing touch with a game-ending buzzer beater as Caja Laboral blew out Cesca for its first playoff victory. Number 4. Athens, Greece Teenage sensation Alex Abrines of FC Barcelona Regal makes the break, keeps the ball and stays with it for the stylish finish. Number three, Istanbul, Turkey, Dusko Savanovic of Anadolu Efes spins off the baseline and puts up his shot, but Kyle Hines of Olympiacos blasts off for a monster block. Number two, Tel Aviv, Israel. J.C. Carroll plays pickpocket at midcourt, goes the distance and throws down the hammer to celebrate his 30th birthday. The number one play of the week, Athens, Greece. Dimitris Diamandidis spies Stefan Lazme ahead of the pack in transition. And Lazme rides the elevator for a reverse alley-oop rim rocker. Like every springtime, the EuroLeague playoffs are coming back to the city of Athens. FC Barcelona Regal landed in Greece to face one of the toughest challenges in European sports. To grab at least a win in the home of Panathinaikos Soaka in front of 18,000 fans. Game 3 was pivotal in the series. A great situation for Panathinaikos and for its coach, Argiris Pedulakis, who is showing that he was the right choice to replace Jelko Obradovic. It was a tough situation uh, this summer for him and uh, for actually for all team. Uh, we didn't know what was the future. And Coach Pedro Lagos is one uh, who stepped up and he said that he can uh, take this take this challenge, uh, take this risk. Because uh, everybody knows that after uh, Mr. Obradovic it's going to be really risky to take this uh, position in uh, our team. Uh, but uh, so far he had made a great job. Uh, we made it uh, so far that uh, nobody could believe in the beginning of the season. And I believe he's the main factor that we succeeded so good. Panathinaikos produced a great effort, taking an early 15-point lead playing with an enormous intensity. However, Barcelona were able to come back and take the lead in the third quarter, launching a very tough battle in the final period. Sarunas Jazikevicius gave a four-point lead to the guests, His former teammate Dimitris Diamantidis was a great factor in the clutch time for the third game in a row. You know what, like Dimitris is one of the best uh, clutch players, not in Europe, in the world. He's, he scores so much important baskets in his life that nobody even knows how much. So like, uh, we, all, we always know we can rely on him, but at the same time we gotta help him. So we gotta do some things extra, you know, play some extra defense, have some extra energy to keep him fresh and to have him rested and in a good shape for the last quarter, for the last five minutes, because he is our leader, our decision maker. This time he scored five points in a row that allowed Panathinaikos to win 65-63 and the Greens got the chance to finish the job in Oaka. A dream date for Panathinaikos and its fans. Somebody talks, somebody expects in silence, you know, so we, we, are, we are not talking, we are try, trying to do our best and I hope we will do our best and I don't know, we will see after two more games left, you know, so. <laughs> Despite the presence of some of the most experienced players around, a great part of this series could be written by a youngster who was catapulted to have a major role in this very crucial moment of the season. Alejandro Abrines, class of 1993. He is completing his first season with Barcelona, a dream come true for him that came in an unexpected way. Things were going well at Malaga. 
Then there were a few problems about renewing my contract and the opportunity arose to come to Barcelona, where I'm very happy. Even if he's playing his first ever EuroLeague playoff series, Alex is able to understand what that means for his club and his teammates. Winning here is our main aim. We're 2-1 down, but I know my teammates, and I know what they can do when everyone gives their best. After his brilliant performance against Maccabi Electra Tel Aviv, coach Xavi Pascual knew that he could rely on him even against big-time opponents, as he did in games two and three against Panathinaikos. And Alex combined for six for seven on field goals and five rebounds in only 31 minutes on the floor. And showing that he can learn how to be a real Blaugrana, working closely with some great champions. Now I have the opportunity to play alongside the likes of Juan Carlos Novara, Victor Sada, Sarunas Yazakovicius. Every day I try to learn something from them. That said, in Game 4, Panathinaikos had the opportunity to play for qualification at home. If we were on a tennis court, we would have called it a match point. Something that Abrines knows very well, as he is a big fan of his fellow citizen of Mallorca, Rafael Nadal. Now a little less so, because I'm away from home, but I always like to follow the matches with my father. However, Nadal can't handle the basketball as well as he does his racket. Barcelona has the right man to call on to make the decisive plays. He's still the same Juan Carlos Navarro. I think it's a natural thing uh, to play the, the last balls uh, with uh, Navarro because he knows how, how to do it, he has experience, he has talent, and he knows how to do these things. But also, uh, when we think too much about this is when we don't play good. In game four, Barcelona used a lot of zone defense and made Panathinaikos pay the price, as the Greek side could not do better than five for 23 on three-point goals. While the superstar Diamantidis finished with an unbelievable zero points. Then came Navarro who scored 11 of his 17 points in the last quarter, driving his team to a 70-60 success, tying the series 2-2. We'll have to wait for Game 5 next Thursday in Barcelona to know which team advances to the Final Four in London. It was a big opportunity, but they are a great team. You know, you cannot count like they're going to give up or play bad in the games like that. You gotta, we knew that we got to play better than like Game 3 if we want to win, and we didn't play even close. It's very difficult to win here, especially with the conditions like this. You know, we have a, we have a lot of tiredness from playing three games a week, and you know, Panathinaikos has a big advantage in in this department. And you know, thank God today we were able to take uh, our energy out, match the energy of Panathinaikos and and this amazing crowd. Well, now we just have to, you know, it's still a one-game situation, you know, for for us and for them. But, you know, it's much more comfortable playing at home and uh, we just have to come out with a lot of energy and uh, try to play our game that today we, we did much better. Down 2-0, Maccabi Electra Tel Aviv knew that there wasn't a lot of space for discussions before facing Real Madrid in the third game of the series last Tuesday. It was about winning or being eliminated, as simple as that. However, this wasn't something new for the Israeli champions. We have experience with do or die games. You know, we, we won uh, six do or die games in a row. And they were all do or die games. <clears throat> so maybe that experience can help us because tomorrow obviously is a do or die game for us. Coach David Blatt and his team had good reason to be optimistic because in their side they had Sean James, the Turkish Airlines Euroleague leader for block shots for almost two per game.
his ability to send back his opponent's attempts and cover his teammates back court against drives and layups has been very important for Maccabi throughout the season, for a player that has tripled his playing time in his second season with the team. Um, tell you the truth, I honestly believe the only area I improved in is confidence. You know, because confidence is the main thing, just having that opportunity to know that you could play and compete with those guys. For me, I, you know, I have the same routine every summer, work on my game individually, but um, for me it was just confidence, knowing that I could play at this level. Sean scored 10 points in the first half of a low-scoring Game 3, with his team fighting to stay in the series and making a big defensive effort against one of the most talented teams of the competition. James knew that his fellow teammates were ready for the challenge. I got some soldiers with me, I got some warriors with me, and I don't know those guys personally, I don't know if they're warriors or soldiers, but I got some guys with me that, that's ready to fight, and so I'm gonna go with my guys. However, forcing Real Madrid to more turnovers than assists was not enough for Maccabi Electra. The Spanish team hit five of its 12 three-pointers in the last quarter and eventually won 69-57, celebrating a second Final Four qualification in three years. The team of coach Pablo Lazo won the series, allowing their opponents to score only an average of 57.7 points over the three games, which is 22 less than Maccabi's average in the previous games of this season. That was not surprising for Nikola Mirotic, who is considered, as well as many of his teammates, more dangerous as a scorer than when he plays in his own half-court. Even though we're a great team in offense, I think we're a good team in defense too. We have demonstrated that at some very difficult venues. I feel we definitely have to improve our defense, but our strength has always been our offense. But I feel that with time, we can improve both. Nicola was very important also in the first two episodes against Maccabi, scoring in double digits twice with 50% on field goals. Basketball is all about rhythm and confidence, and Miritic revealed to us a little locker room secret. We always have to listen to something different before every game. Our friend Sergio Lul always brings along something new, and I feel that music always gives you a further lift before the game starts. That said, we'll hear more of that sound in London during the Final Four. Here we go, highlights lovers. Here the game four top five plays. Number five, Istanbul, Turkey. Get him to Jetty to Jamon Lucas, going baseline for a rim shaking slam. Lucas was not done yet, however, he'll be back later. Number four, Athens, Greece. Nate Jawe rumbles to the rim, carries some defenders with him, and brings down the hammer as Barcelona forces Game 5 against Panathinaikos. Number 3, Istanbul, Turkey, fourth quarter. It's Kyle Heinz time. Aliou pass to Semierden of Efes, but Heinz comes out of nowhere and blasts the ball off the glass. Number two, Athens, Greece. Michael Bramus on the break, sees daylight and challenges Joe Ingles of Barcelona to detonate the dunk. And the number one play of playoffs game four. Final seconds in Istanbul. FS trying to save its season. Josh Ship misses, but Jamon Lucas is there to bank in the game winner on a tip-in with one second left. 
FS Days Alive. The drama will raise at its top level when FC Barcelona Regal hosts Panathinaikos Athens in the next game of the week on Thursday, April 25th at 2100 Central European time. A do or die game to book a ticket to London. An incredible series with the first three games decided by a total of five points and both team winning one away. The 2010 champions of FC Barcelona and the 2011 winners of Panathinaikos Athens are both looking for their fourth Final Four in the last five seasons. An unpredictable game where little things will make the difference and the superstars Juan Carlos Navarro and Erezem Lorbeck on a side, Dimitris Diamantidis and Stefan Lasme on the other are expected to make the big plays. Fasten your seatbelts and stay tuned to follow FC Barcelona Regal and Panathinaikos Athens in the crucial Game 5 of their playoff series in the next Game of the Week. Euroleague.